Shalom Rastafari. Mm. So now we just want to add one more piece of evidence, one more important exhibit into this particular equation concerning the so-called Illuminati eye concerning this. Now we already have made that link with the ayn, ayn, A-Y-I-N, A-Y-N, A-I-N, some of the variations. This, this eye symbol, so-called the eye of Horus, or we should really say the counterfeit eye of Horus, because in ancient Egypt, if you study all of the, the art, the wall paintings, the monuments, the writings, the hieroglyphs, the papyri, papyrus, so forth and so on, the manuscripts, all the evidence, you will, will not find this sort of a symbol with the eye in a pyramid, the so-called eye of Horus in a pyramid. That right there shows us the key significant that there's a difference, that yes, perhaps they learned this in Egypt. And when we see the number of um, foreigners, the, the whole situation with foreigners who came to Egypt and learned and and, and gain wisdom and culture and even became Egyptianized. This is, this is part of the mystery of it. Just like today we have Americans, and we know that this is, biblically speaking, spiritual Egypt, right? So people come from all over the, the world. They get nationalized or watch a lot of TV and other kind of stuff, and they know how to act and speak like people do on TV, and they can become Americans. So there's a certain process by which one can be so-called Americanized. I mean, you have a lot of people around the world who have never been to America, but if you were to, you know, meet them, besides the difference in their accent, so forth and so on, if you see how people dress, jeans and so forth and so on, there's a good documentary um, by um, Neil, uh, I think Ferguson is his name, on civilization, and he touches on whether jeans brought down the so-called Berlin Wall, it's showing that the culture, so the whole world is in this particular culture, and we see the same thing happening in ancient Egypt. Now, Egypt, it must be recalled, right, was a colony of Ethiopia, ancient Tobia. Now, what we call Sudan today was, some say Nubia, some say portion of it was Upper Egypt, but when the Egyptians spoke of Upper Egypt, they was not speaking of just so-called Sudan or Nubia. They were speaking of this highland plateau that in, on modern maps is political Ethiopia, is political Ethiopia. Just to put certain things into its context, and Ethiopia is not from the Greek, but from the ancient Afro-Shemitic or the Ethiopic, the good is from the Tobia and um, uh, Ethiopis, Ethiopis, but Tobia is the archaic name of Ethiopia, and this is connected with To in the Hebrew. This, the lower part of it, the lower part was what's called Sudan. Sudan is not an ancient name for this place. We have to note that. We can thank um, the maybe more black presence, even with the Muslims or the Mohammedans, the, the Mahdi family, Dr. York's family, Mom Issa's family there, because they did fight against the, the, Europe, the, the Europeans, the, the Anglo-European or the Anglo, what they call Egyptian condominium. And we have that particular, the Mahdi uprising, um, the Mohammedan Negro prophet, the, the, the historians, refer to under that particular appellation or naming of it. But let's just now connect the third piece of evidence. I think this is the third or the fourth piece of evidence concerning this. We mentioned before, all right, we mentioned before to know where we're at right here. We mentioned before that Zacharias or Zachariah, right? And so what we have here is what's known as the 12 prophets in Judaism. There's the, there's the Naveen, Nabim, and then there are the so-called um, minor prophets. Often they'll be referred to as the minor prophets. So this is Zachariah, Zachariah, or Zachariah, 
and this is the book of Zechariah. Now, the name Zechariah is basically translated as the remembrance, the remembrance of of um, Yah, of Jah, or of Yah, of the great I am, or the great He is, who He is, from the Ehya Asha Ehya. Now, in this particular book, which is a very interesting um, prophet, don't ignore the so-called minor prophets, because some people call them minor. The only reason why they call them minor is that their books are smaller. But we have to remember, in connection with the vision, that all of the prophets are basically bringing forth various elements of one particular vision. So let me give you a close-up of this, um, this particular book right here. Let's go to the title page right here, and we have the 12 prophets, the 12 prophets, just to show you this book, show you the title page right here, so you can get to see it, reference it, I think down here you can see who publishes it right here, the Solcinco, Solcinco, Solcinco Press, and this was published 1957, now the cover right here, you see the Hebrew, right, and this is um, uh, Tere, 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 Aser, Tere, Aser. Tere, Aser, it's interesting, it's the 12 prophets, right? And actually, that says the 12. It doesn't say Naveen, it just says the 12, because there are so-called 12 minor prophets. And to see a black and white of that right here. Um, now, what's interesting about the, the Hebrew right here, Tere, Tere is not really Hebrew. That's Shani, Shani, Shani is the Hebrew for two, right? Now, what's interesting is that Tere, Tere, Terin, Terina, which is the feminine form of it, it refers to, it's, it's Aramaic. It's Aramaic and not, and not um, quote, uh, Masoretic Hebrew. In other words, books like Donnell, we find this particular... Um, rare use of the number for two. So it's two and ten. Tari Aser. Tari Aser, or the twelve, to speak on the twelve. Now, we're going to give you a little close up of this right here so you can see exactly what we were reading and how, when you read in the King James Version, right, in the King James Version of this particular book, chapter five, verse six you'll read or say resemblance concerning this eye and concerning what is known as the seventh vi vision in chapter 5, um, verses 5 to 11, which is the seventh vision, and the seventh vision is the woman in the measure, the woman in the measure. So what we're going to do is give you a close-up. Let's bring you forward, give you a close-up right here. All right, let's see if we got enough light. Okay, here we go. So this is, this is, uh, as you can see right here, this is the, is this clear? This is the Hebrew right here. Let's see if, okay, it's not as clear as we would like it to be. Let's see if we can get a little bit clearer. Let's get a little bit of light right here. All right, okay, here we go right here. Yeah, this is not clear. Maybe we have to retake, cut and retake again, because it's not as clear as we would, as we would like it. So what we'll do is we'll get a second part and get the close up of this, because we think it's really important that you get to see what it says here and readjust this. All right. So 